preschoolers. How are you? I am so excited that we get to do these video classes and um, I can't see you, but you can see me. And while we're doing these classes, if you want your mom or dad to take pictures of you and send them to me, I think that would be really fun so that I can see what you guys are doing during the classes. So first, let me tell you what you need for this class today so you can get all your papers filled. Let me show you first and then you can pause the video if you don't have all these things and go get it and then come back and press play. So let me show you first what you're gonna need. So you're gonna need first your name paper. I don't have a name paper here but you have your name paper in your packet. Then you're gonna need your U papers. So you're gonna need this U the pup paper, this U tracing paper, you're going to need your U uh, book. It's not um, cut up and stapled into a little book. It's just the whole paper. So you'll need this. And then you'll need your um, Easter egg hatching chick paper. You're also going to need your cutout shoe and the red yarn that's in your craft bag. So your shoe and the red yarn. You're going to need some pencils or crayons or markers. Any of those will work. You're going to need 10 items to count. So you can use cereal, you can use blocks, little dinosaur toys, Legos, pencils, anything. You just need 10 of them. So I have little blocks here, but you can use anything you want. We're going to do adding today. Then you'll also need a brad tack. This is a little brad tack. I'll put it on the table here so you can see it a little better. So this is called a brad tack. You only have one and it should be in your baggie. And then you're also going to need some scissors. And remember when you go get your scissors that if you're walking with them, first of all make sure you ask mom and dad what scissors you can use. Um, mom and dad might have big scissors and they might want to help you use those. So um, make sure you ask mom and dad which scissors to get. And then when you're walking with them, remember to hold them like bunny ears. So you're going to hold and wrap your hand around the metal part so that the little two loops that you stick your fingers through are sticking up out of the top of your hand and it looks like little bunny ears sticking out of the rabbit hole. Remember bunny ears when you're walking. So that's all that you're going to need. Um, so if you want to, go ahead and press pause and go get all of your stuff and then come back and hit play. If you already have all your stuff, just keep watching. Okay guys, did you get all your stuff, all your papers and your stuff? Go ahead and set those aside and we're going to do our welcome song. And I don't know what time of day you guys are watching this. Some of you were in the morning classes and we sang good morning, some were in the afternoon and we sang good afternoon. But you guys will probably be watching at all different times of day. So instead of singing good morning or good afternoon, we're going to sing happy preschool day. So get your hands warmed up nice and warm. Get your fingers up. Okay, I want you guys to try and sing louder than me. Can you sing louder than I do? Okay, let's try it. Here we go. One, two, three. Good. No, no, sorry. Happy preschool day. Happy preschool day. How are you? How are you? It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. We'll have fun. We'll have fun. Did you sing louder than I did? I bet you did. You guys are so good at that song. Okay, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. So remember, you're going to stand up wherever you are, if you're at home or wherever, if you're sitting at the table or on the couch. Stand up and you're going to put your right hand on your heart so we can say the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you stand up facing me, this hand is your left hand. So we're going to put that one down. And this hand over here is your right hand. That's the one you're going to put on your heart. Did everyone get it? If you're mirroring me, it should look like this. All right, face the flag, stand up tall. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, you guys can sit back down. All right, we're going to go to our calendar questions. Do you guys remember our calendar? Can you guys see it okay? 
All right, we're going to go over the cal calendar questions, and then I'm going to ask the questions and see if you can answer them all. And if you have a brother or sister or mom or dad sitting close by you, they can tell you if you got the answers right or not. So first, we're just going to go over the answers really quickly. So remember what this is called? This is a calendar. And what month is it? Do you guys remember the month? It's been a long time since we've been in preschool, but it is still March. So March starts with the letter M. So if you remember the sound M makes, it says mmm. So when you look at it, you can remember mmm for March. So everyone say March. Good job. Okay, how many days are in March? There are 31 days. It's one of the longest months of the year. So everyone say 31 days. Today is this day right here. Today is Monday, March 30th, and we are almost to the end of the month. We only have one more day of March, and then on this day, it's going to be the first day of April. Um, the holiday in March, do you guys remember the holiday where we dress in green? That is St. Patrick's Day. So everyone say St. Patrick's Day. And then this, I don't know if you guys remember, this is the first day of spring. So we are not in winter anymore. The season changed from winter to spring on this day. And we've had a whole week of spring, but it's still snowing. I remember how we talked about how sometimes in the spring it still snows a little bit as it gets warmer and warmer. But you guys will start to see the leaves start to bud on the trees and you'll see some stuff growing up out of the ground and the grass is going to turn greener so when you get outside to play a little bit check out the trees and the grass and see if they're starting to change so it is spring and this is the first day of spring so those are two different questions okay now ask someone to come sit by you and i'm going to ask these questions again but i'm not going to give the answers so whoever's sitting next to you is going to tell you if you got the answer right or not so i'm going to ask the question then i'm going to pause for a minute and you answer it and see if you got it right, okay? So first question, what is this called? You guys always say this is the easiest question. Did you get it right? Okay, what month is it? Remember, it starts with the letter M. Mm. What month is it? Did you get it right? Okay, how many days are in March? How many days? There's a lot of them. It's a big month. Did you get that one right? Okay, next question. What holiday is in March? It's where we have to wear green or we get pinched on that day. And what is this the first day of? First day of, did you get it right? And last question, what season is it? So it's not winter anymore. What season is it now? Did you get that one right too? All right, hopefully you got all of them right. Tomorrow we'll, or on the, the next class, we'll work on that again. Okay, everyone say hello to Mr. Gobble Gobble. Do you guys remember Mr. Gobble Gobble? Say hi, Mr. Gobble Gobble. He has all of his feathers, finally. So we are going to count all of his feathers just a regular way, and then we're going to count a silly way. So see if you guys can count as loud as Miss Katie. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Good job. Okay, so now I don't have a special helper here today. So I'm going to pick how we're going to count today, the silly way. And then if you have an idea of a way that we can count silly, then have your mom text it to me and we'll see if we can do it one of the other days in our video classes. So today we're gonna count like chipmunks. Do you guys remember how to count like chipmunks? Remember high squeaky voice, put your little paws up, your little, I don't know what they have, claws I think? Squirrels have claws, chipmunks have claws. All right, we're gonna count with a really high pitched voice. Are you guys ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Good little squirrels. All right. We are going to sing 
our four songs. Remember we had our days of the week song, our month song, our number song, and then we're going to learn a new song this month, the four season song. So that's going to be the last song we're going to learn for preschool. Okay, we're going to start um, with our days of the week song. So fingers up. Here we go. Try to sing louder than I do. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Days of the week. Days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. Seven days. Okay, good job. Let's do um, month song. Remember to pat and clap. And remember silent hands. Shh, don't make any sound. But sing loud. So quiet hands, loud voice. Here we go. One, two, ready, set, here we go. January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December, 12 months in a year. Clap. Woo! Um, let's see, what's the next one? Oh, the number song. Okay, here we go. Ready? Up and down, silent hands. Remember, quiet, quiet. See if you can do it with no noise. Okay, see if you can sing louder than me. Ready, set, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Good job, you guys. Okay, we're going to learn the four season song. So this is a brand new song that we're learning for this month. And if you guys learn it by the end of the month, and you can sing it for your mom or dad or brother and sister all by yourself with no help, then you guys can come over and get a treasure. I think I'm going to try to find a way to put the treasure bag out on my porch. And you guys can come and use some hand sanitizer and clean your hands and then pick out a treasure if you learn this song by the end of the month. So we're going to practice it during every video class, but I want you to be practicing it at home with your mom and dad when you're in the car or you're just playing outside. Try to sing it and practice it as much as you can. So there are four seasons. There's fall, winter, spring, and summer. And I have some books here. We've already been through fall, so I'm going to show you a picture. So fall is when the leaves change colors and they start to fall out of the trees and it starts to get a little bit colder. So that's fall. So for fall in our song, we're gonna make leaves falling out of the trees. So fall, then we have winter. Winter comes next. That's the season that we just had. So winter is when it's really cold and snowy outside and we have to wear coats and boots and gloves because it's so chilly. So for winter, we're going to act like we're freezing. Winter and then spring, that's the season that we're in now. So remember in spring, everything starts to grow. It gets a little bit warmer outside. It starts to, um, everything starts to turn green and we get leaves on the trees. So in spring, we're going to make a little flower grow out of the ground like that. So it's kind of go fast. So you have to make a little hole with your hand and then pop that little flower up just like that. Then for summer, summer is my favorite season of the whole year. I love summer. Summer is when it gets really warm outside. It almost, it gets really hot actually too in the middle of the summer. That's the hottest time of year, and we get to wear shorts and go swimming and play outside. So for summer, we're going to go, oh, so hot for summer, okay? So this is how this song goes. I want you to listen to it once, and then I want you to help me sing it the next time. So I'm going to go slow. It goes like this. Fall, winter, spring, and summer. Fall, winter, spring, and summer. Fall, winter, spring, and summer, four seasons in a year. So that's it. Super easy. It's the tune that we've been singing to the other songs. And there's only four seasons, and we sing it three times. Okay, so you guys ready? Okay, get your hands up. I want you to try and sing it with me this time, okay? Fall is the first season we start with. Here we go. One, two, three. Fall. 
Winter, spring, and summer, fall. Winter, spring, and summer, fall. Winter, spring, and summer, four seasons in a year. Oh yeah! You can add the oh yeah at the end if you want. Okay, good job! You guys did so Okay guys, good. we're gonna move right. on to the shoe. So you guys need to grab your shoe and this red yarn is gonna be your shoelace. And this month you are gonna learn how to tie a bow or to tie a shoelace. It's really important to learn how to tie a shoelace because if you grow up and you want to tie your big shoes that have shoelaces on them, if you don't know how, if you never learned, you're not going to be able to tie your shoes. Or if you want to wrap a present for somebody and you have to tie a bow on it and you don't know how to tie the bow, you're not going to be able to wrap a present with a bow on it. So we're going to learn how to tie a bow. So you need your shoe and your shoelace. And if there's someone close by, like a big brother, a big sister, mom or dad, ask them to come over and help you because we're going to actually lace this shoe. we got to put the string through the shoelaces. And this is going to be your practice shoe for the whole month. So I want you to practice tying the bow. And it is really tricky. Tying a bow is really tricky. It's going to take a lot of practice. And remember, practice means doing something over and over and over and over again. And the more you do it, the better you get. Practice makes progress. So the more you do it, the better you're going to get. So don't be frustrated at the beginning when it's really tricky and it's really hard. Just keep trying. Every day, I want you to practice on your shoe. Ask someone big to help you. Someone who knows how to tie a bow. They can help you and practice over and over and over again. Okay, so if you have your shoe... Um, we're going to start. If not, just pause the video for just a second. Go get your shoe and your shoelace. Grab mom or dad or big brother and sister and then come sit back down and press play. Okay, so what you're going to do is, if you'd like to, you can color this, but first we're going to lace it. So you're going to take your, the end of your yarn, the red yarn, and you're going to poke it through the back of the shoe at one of the top holes right here. And you're going to pull it through. So it's about halfway. See how the laces are the same length? Then you're going to take that same lace that's coming out of the front of the shoe and you're going to poke it behind or in the other hole right next to it and pull it through so that both strings are hanging down the back of your shoe. Then you're going to take one of the back strings, it doesn't matter which one, and you're going to come across and you're going to crisscross and put it in the hole over here on this side, the next hole down, and pull it all the way through. Then you're going to take the other lace and you're going to cross over to this hole. You're going to poke it through that hole and then pull it all the way through. But you don't want to pull too tight because it will pull the whole shoelace out. Okay. Okay, now the strings are coming out of the front. See how they're both coming down the front? Then you're going to take one side and you're going to crisscross. Remember, you don't go straight down. You're going to crisscross over to the next hole and down. Put it through that hole and then pull it through all the way, but not too tight. Oh, and look, on the front, my string got mixed up, so I'm just going to pull it out like that. So see how it crosses over and it goes through that hole and now it's coming out the back. Then you're going to take the other side. You've got to do both sides before you move on to the next one. You're going to take this side, crisscross over to the next hole, poke it through, <laughs> and pull it out the back until it comes all the way through. Then you're going to do it again. Same thing for the last hole. You're going to crisscross, take this side, and crisscross over to this hole. Poke that in, pull it through the front, take the other string that's coming out the back, crisscross over to the next hole, poke that in there, and pull it all the way through. So on the front, it should look like a straight line across, and then a crisscross, and then two strings coming out those bottom holes. On the back, two X's. So if you have it like that, You've done it right. If it's a little messy, don't worry, it's okay. Pause the video and go grab mom or dad and they can help you lace it up. 
and then when you're ready, come back and press play once you have your shoe all laced up, okay? So I'm going to give you a few seconds to do that. If you have your shoe already laced up and you're ready to go, I'm going to show you how to tie a bow on this. And I'm going to show you first, so don't, don't use your shoe yet. Set your shoe down and just watch for just a second, okay? I'm going to pin this up on the board. <clears throat> And here we go. So you have two laces. Just remember, watch first, and then we'll do it together, okay? So what you're going to do with these two laces is you're going to cross them over and switch hands. So you have a cross right here in the middle. Then you're going to take your right hand string, and you're going to poke it through. See, there's a, there's a loop right there. You're going to poke that through the loop, and you're going to pull it out the bottom and pull it tight. So now you have a little tie right there on your shoe. Then you're going to take your right side again and you're going to make a loop and you're going to pinch it close to your shoe. You don't want to make the loop way out here because then your bow is going to be hanging down all big and floppy. So you want it close. So you're going to make a little loop and pinch it with your thumb and your finger. Then you're going to take the other string and you're going to wrap it around your thumb around the loop, and there's going to be a loop right here around your thumb. And you're going to take that string right here, and you're going to poke it through the loop, grab the little loop, and pull it tight. And that is your bow. Now that looks really easy to do, but when you actually try to do it, it's very, very tricky. So, grab your shoe, grab your lace, and we're going to try and do this. I'm going to go really slow. So just try your best. This is the first time you're trying it. So if it's really, really tricky and hard, don't worry. Don't get discouraged. Just keep trying your best, okay? So remember, you're going to take two laces. You're going to cross them and switch hands. Then, see how there's an X right there? You're going to take the bottom lace, which is this one in my hand, and you're going to poke it through that hole and pull it out. And then see how there's a big loop there? You've got to pull both strings to the side to make it tight. Then you still have two strings hanging down. Then you're going to take this side over here and you're going to make that little loop and pinch it with your thumb and your pointer finger. Then you're going to take this string and you're going to loop it around your thumb and then you're going to poke it through where you're, the hole that goes around your thumb. And then you're going to pull it tight like that. Okay? Now, if you didn't get it, that's okay. It's totally fine if you didn't get it, if it didn't work. That's why you need to practice. Practice, practice, practice all month long. Now, let me show you something really tricky, too. When you're untying a bow, if you pull on the loop to untie it, it's going to actually make a knot. So whenever you're untying something, you always want to look for the two strings, not the loops. There's two loops and two strings. You always want to pull on one of the strings. Actually, you can pull on both strings, and then you can pull this out, and then that will untie it and not make it knot. Okay? Now remember, it's okay if you messed up. I'm still proud of you. You're doing great. Just keep practicing. This is going to take a lot of practice to learn how to do really, really well. Okay? Okay, guys, this week we get to learn a new letter. Does anyone know what this letter is? Can you tell by the shape? This is the letter U, the pup. And U is a really fun letter because it's really easy to draw. It looks like a bowl or a cup or something. But this is U, the pup. And pup does not start with the letter U. It has a U in the middle. So it says, the word is pup. And you can hear the uh sound in pup. So it's a little puppy dog. So we call him you the pup. And I want you to look at big U and little U. Do they look the same or do they look a little bit different? Big U is big. And little U is a small dip, but then it has a line down the side. So they're a little bit different. They're pretty much the same, but little U has this little line down the side of it. So I want you guys to listen to You the Pup's story. You the Pup wants up. Uh, uh, uh. 
He begged Uncle Pup to pick him up, but Uncle Pup was sitting under an umbrella and didn't want to get up. Ah, 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 he begged Aunt Pup to pick him up, but Aunt Pup was also sitting under an umbrella and didn't want to get up. Finally, Father Pup heard you the pup saying, ah, ah, ah. So Father Pup picked up the pup and put him under the umbrella. You the pup is now utterly happy. So, you the pup says, ah. Uh, can you guys say that with me? Ah. Uh, good job. And, okay, we're going to move on. So, if you have your you paper, uh, you don't need to get them out just yet. So wait just a second. I'm going to show you what you're going to do on your you paper. And then you're going to pause the video and you're going to go work on them. So you the pup paper, you've got this one and you've got the you practice writing paper. So do you guys remember what you do on your paper first? Yep, you write your name at the top. So you're going to write your name right here. And then on this you paper, you're going to trace the letter U. Big U, little U. And then remember all the U's on the bottom. Big U, little U. And remember when you're tracing, you want to stay on that train track. You're going to pretend that your pencil is the train and these dotted lines are the train tracks. And we don't want the train to come off the train track. So you got to keep your pencil right on it and remember to go slow. If you go too fast, do you remember what happens? When a train goes too fast on a train track, it comes off the train track sometimes. So you want to go slow and go write really neat. Remember how we talked about writing neat letters? Because if you write a letter to your grandma or grandpa, and you don't write your letters really neatly, then they aren't going to be able to read what it says. So you got to make sure that you use your letters and write them really neatly. Okay, so you're going to do your first U paper, and then you're going to do your next U paper. Remember, write your name at the top, Try to write your name neatly, and then you're going to trace all the big U's. Stay right on the track. So you're going to trace all those, and then on the open line, you're going to do two big U's. If you make a mistake, it's okay. Just cross it out and try again, but try to get two good U's. Then you're going to do your little U's. And remember, little U, it only goes up to the middle line. Big U touches the top line and the bottom line. Little U only touches the middle line and the bottom line. So you're going to do your little U's, try to stay right on the track, and then how many little U's do you do on the bottom line? Two, that's right. So you're going to do a little U and a little U. Now, are big U and little U sinkers? Do they sink down below the bottom line? No, they don't. That's right. So you've got to stop right here on the bottom line and don't let them be sinkers. So I want you guys to pause the video, go do your name paper. So get out your name paper, you're going to do that, and you're going to do your U, the pup paper, and your U tracing paper. Then when you're all done, come back and press play. And we have a lot of more, a lot of more, we have lots more fun things that we're going to do, okay? So I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay kids, we're going to do our U book. So you need this paper. It's not cut and stapled into our little book that you're used to seeing. It's just one big paper, so it'll be a little bit easier for you, you to use at home. Um, but when we're all done, if you want to ask your mom or dad to help you cut it up on these lines and then staple it together into a little book, you can do that. Okay, so on the top of the paper, I want you to find the letter U and touch under it and say, uh. So touch under big U, say, uh. Touch under little u and say uh. Very good. Okay, then touch under the first big word in the middle of that first page. Touch under it and say the. Touch under the next word and say sun. So the book is called The Sun. And this says, what does your family do? This story is about a frog family that lives in a pond. Read this story to find out what this family does in the sun. So we get to read a story about a frog family that likes to do fun things in the sun. Okay, move over to this next rectangle, page number two. Touch under the first big word in the middle of the page and say bud. Then move over, touch under the next word and say mom. <clears throat> touch under the next word and say sis. So that's short for sister. 
touch under the next word and say dad. Then come down to the next row and go back to the very first word. Touch under it and say pop. Touch under the next word and say son. Touch under the next word and say fun. Touch under the next word and say gum. Okay, come down to the next row. Go back to the first word in that row. Touch under it and say naps. Touch under the next word and say jump. <clears throat> Touch under the next word and say gabs. Touch under the last word in that row and say nips. So gabs means to talk a lot. So if somebody gabs, that means they talk a lot. They like to talk. Nips is like when a puppy likes to bite, like a soft little bite. Those are called nips. So it's just soft biting that doesn't hurt. Okay, go down and touch uh, the first word in the very last row. Touch under it and say log. Touch under the next word and say pad. Touch under the next word, say bug. Touch under the last word and say I. So now what I want you to do is go through all these words and touch the words that have the letter U or the sound uh in them. So bud has the U, sun, fun, gum, jump, and bug. Can you hear all those uh sounds? <clears throat> okay, come down here into the next rectangle, page number three. We are going to start reading this book. All these words are going to be in this book. But don't worry if you can't read them. What I want you to do is just touch under the words and touch under each word as we read them and try to repeat what I say as we go. Okay, find the first word on page number three. The word is mom. So touch under it and then get ready to follow along with your finger and touch under each word as we read. Mom gabs on a pad in the sun. So what does mom like to do in the sun? She likes to gab. That's right. What does gab mean? It means to talk. Do moms like to talk a lot? I like to talk a lot. That's a lot of fun for me. Okay, go over to page number four. Find the word dad. <clears throat> okay, follow along with your finger as we read. Here we go. Dad nips at a bug in the sun. So what does dad like to do in the sun? He likes to nip at bugs. What do frogs like to eat? Bugs, that's right. Okay, come down to page number five. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Okay, page number five. Find the first word on that page. That's the word sis. Remember, that's short for what? Sister. Okay, here we go. Sis pops gum in the sun. So what does sis like to do in the sun? Yep, she likes to pop bubble gum in the sun. Do frogs really chew bubble gum? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, turn or go to page number six and find the word pop. Okay, follow along with your finger as we read. Pop naps on a log in the sun. So first of all, who is pop? Have you ever heard of someone calling their grandpa pops or pop? Sometimes kids like to call Grandpa Pop. So this is Grandpa. And what is Grandpa doing in the sun? Yep, he's taking a nap on the log. Very good. Okay, come down to page number seven. Find the first word on the bottom of this rectangle. That's the word bud. Okay, get ready to follow along with your finger. Here we go. Bud and I jump in the sun. So what do Bud and his friend like to do? Yep, they like to jump in the sun. Okay, last page, page number eight. Come down, find the first word, and follow along as we read. It is fun 
in the sun. So what are they doing in the sun? Yep, they're having fun. Do you guys have fun in the sun too? <laughs> I like when it's warm outside. Hopefully it's going to get warmer here soon. So, um, put this paper away and then come sit down in front of the TV or the phone or whatever you're watching this on because we're going to do vocabulary words, sound cards, and story time. So, get comfortable. Maybe if mom and dad will let you, you can grab a pillow for story time and lay down if you want to. And you can pause and then come back and press play when you're all ready. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, hey guys, we're going to go through our sound cards. So if you want to, you guys can do the actions like M the moose. Remember he rubs his tummy. Mm. And you can do those. I am holding these cards, so I'm not going to be able to do them. But if you remember how to do the actions, go ahead and do them with them. Remember, when I touch under this dot, that means get ready. When I touch under this dot, that means say the sound. And when I touch the end, the arrow down here, that means stop saying the sound. So remember, don't say the sound until I touch under it. So if I wait here for a little bit, remember to wait, and then say the sound when I touch under it. Okay, here we go. Get ready. Mmm. Good job. Okay, this is a fast sound. Get ready. T. This is a slow sound. Get ready. Ah. Another slow sound. S okay, this is a fast sound. B. Good job. Another fast sound. H. Okay, another fast sound. K. Slow sound. I. Slow sound. Remember what it is? Oh, good job. Fast sound. Oh, wait till I touch under it. You ready? J. Good job. Fast sound. P. Slow sound. F. Good job. Okay, slow sound. Ah. Mmm. It's a fast sound. Remember what it is. D. Another fast sound. Remember, it's not j. Think about what it is. Get ready. G. Slow sound. Er. Another slow sound. Oh, we haven't learned this one yet. Hang on. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is the sound we're learning today. Get ready. Ah. Uh, good job. Remember, you, the pup, wants up. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Have you ever tried to ask your mom or dad to pick you up when you wanted them to hold you? You say, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Pick me up. All right, good job, you guys. Okay, now we're going to do our vocabulary words. Let's see if you guys remember these. Okay, we're going to say these all together. Remember to say, say the word with me, okay? Here we're going to go. We need to show respect. Good. And be polite. Have good behavior. Animals that sleep all winter. Hibernate. We want to be safety heroes and stay away from danger. What kind of food do we want to eat? Nutritious food. Good job. Another word for thankful. Grateful. The opposite of sick. Healthy. A big dinner. Feast. Santa is Jovial, good job. Christmas decorations are festive. To go get something means fetch. We use our, or we pretend with this. Imagination, good. A good idea, 
is ingenious. Another word for awesome. Remarkable. We have five what? Senses. Good job. Uh, something that tastes really yummy. Scrumptious. Another word for sleep. Slumber. Everything outside that's not made by people. Nature. Good job. Okay, remember this big word? This is something that gets us from one place to another place. Transportation. Good job. Now this one we were gone for. This is geography. And geography is learning about the land and the earth and different things on the earth. So everyone say geography. Good job. And this, yep, this is our new word for this week. So it's a short word. And this word is tame. Can everyone say tame? Good job. So tame, um, when we're talking about animals, means animals that can be around people. So this month in, in well, it's still March, but we're going to start learning about what we're going to learn about in April. So in April, we're going to be learning about animals, all kinds of different animals. And there are tame animals, and the opposite of a tame animal is a wild animal. So a tame animal are animals that can live around human beings, and they're trained to be around people like dogs and cats. Those are tame animals. Wild animals would be animals like lions and tigers and bears. They're wild. They live out in nature, and they find their own food, and they find their own house and their caves and their trees and different things like that. And those are wild animals. And we want to stay away from wild animals because they're not trained to be around humans. They're not tame. So tame animals are like your pets and animals that are nice and can be around humans. Okay, so everyone say tame. Good job. All right. Okay, we are going to move on and we are going to read some stories. And then we're going to do a fun little craft project. Okay, so uh, we haven't been to school in the last couple weeks, and that was when it changed to spring. So I'm going to read you this book that we were going to read last week about spring. It's called Wake Up, It's Spring. <clears throat> okay, can you guys see that? Wake Up, It's Spring. The winter was long and cold. See all that snow in that picture? Then early one morning, the sun rose and warmed the earth. Wake up, old friend, it's spring, whispered the sun. And the warmed earth woke up. The earth basked in the sun's glow, then nudged its guest, the earthworm. Time to wake up, spring is here. And the earthworm woke up. The worm wiggled in the warm earth and sang to its neighbor the seed. Spring is here, rise and shine. And the seed woke up. The seed sprouted and grew out of the earth. It called to the sleeping ladybug. Wake up, spread your wings, it's spring. And the ladybug woke up. Good job. The ladybug laughed in the sunshine. It tickled the rabbit's ear as it whispered, Psst, rabbit, spring is here. And the rabbit woke up. The rabbit twitched his nose to smell the spring air. He thumped to the bird in her nest. Out of bed, sleepyhead, it's spring. And the bird woke up. The bird soared from above and flew past the sleeping cat. Wake up, furry friend, the bird chirped. Spring is here. And the cat woke up. The cat stretched her legs and rubbed past the sleeping dog. Time to get up, she yawned. It's spring. And the dog woke up. 
The dog frisked and jumped and barked into the baby's room. Woof, woof, wake up, wake up, it's spring, cheered the dog. And the baby woke up. The baby stood up in her crib with a laugh and shouted to her brother and sister, Out, out, spring! And the brother and sister woke up. They picked up the baby and ran to their parents' room, jumped on the bed, and shouted, Wake up! Open your eyes! Spring is here! Spring is here at last! And the parents woke up, one eye at a time. <laughs> and they all ran to dance together in the warm sun. The parents, and the brother, and the sister, and the baby, and the dog, and the cat, and the bird, and the rabbit, and the ladybug, and the seed, and the earthworm, and all the earth. Because it was spring. <laughs> They're sure glad spring is here, huh? I am too. Okay, we're going to read this other book about animals, and this is one of my favorite animal books because it's so silly. It's called Animals Should Definitely Not wear clothing. <laughs> Animals should definitely not wear clothing because it would be disastrous for a porcupine. Because a camel might wear it in the wrong places. Is that where you wear a hat? No. Because a snake would just lose it. Could a snake wear pants? No, that's so silly. Because a mouse could get lost in it. Do you see the mouse's tail? That's all that's showing. I think that mouse is trapped in that hat. It's too big for a little mouse. Because a sheep might find it terribly hot. Does a sheep need to wear a sweater and a hat? No, they already have lots of fur and wool on them. Because it could be very messy for a pig. Pigs would just get it dirty, huh? <laughs> because it might make life very hard for a hen. What's stuck in her pants? Is that an egg? She tried to lay an egg, but she's wearing pants. Would that work on a chicken? No, it wouldn't. That's so silly. Because a kangaroo would find it quite unnecessary. Do kangaroos need more pockets in their clothes? Nope. They don't. Because a giraffe might look sort of silly. <laughs> Giraffes have long what? Necks. That's right. They have long necks. So if they wore a toy they, or a tie, they'd have to wear lots of ties. Because a billy goat would eat it for lunch. Silly billy goat. Did you know that billy goats eat pretty much everything? They eat garbage and material and cans and anything. They'll eat anything. So the billy goat would just eat it. Because it would always be wet on a walrus. I think he needs a swimming suit, not a business suit. <laughs> because a moose would never manage. Could a moose get a shirt on over his antlers? No. Because opossums might wear them upside down by mistake. Do you see those possums? They're wearing their clothes upside down. They're so silly. And most of all, because it might be very embarrassing. What if you were wearing the same thing as an elephant? Would that be so silly? The end. That is one of my favorite, favorite animal books. And because we're learning about animals and Easter is coming up, we are going to do a fun little project. So I need you to go get this uh, hatching chick paper and a brad tack. You're going to get your little brad tack. You're going to need your scissors. So if your mom and dad want to help you cut, you need to go tell them. Not yet. One more thing. And then you also need some crayons or pencils or markers. Okay? 
So if you don't have all that stuff ready, go ahead and hit pause and get your paper, your scissors, your brad tuck, and your crayons, and then come back when you're ready and hit play. Okay, we'll see you in a minute. Okay, so do you have your hatching chick paper? I have already colored mine, and I'm gonna show you how to do the whole project, so don't do anything yet. Just leave your papers and your scissors and everything on the table. I'm gonna show you how to do it, and then I'm gonna go over it again, and then when I'm done, I'm gonna have you press pause, and then you'll go work on it, and then come back and press play, okay? So for right now, just watch. Just set your papers down and just watch. So first, I colored my Easter egg, and I colored the little baby chick. And I colored it yellow with an orange beak, and I colored my Easter egg, these colors, but you can color any color you want. Doesn't matter what you color. Then, after you're done coloring, you're gonna take your scissors, and you're gonna cut out these three pieces. So you have one side of the egg, the other side of the egg, and your baby chick. So remember, when you cut, you wanna point the metal part of your scissors up to the ceiling, and there's a little hole and a big hole. Your thumb goes in the little hole, and your three or four fingers fit in the big hole. My fingers are kind of big, so I can only fit three fingers in. Then, remember you keep your thumb on top and you start at the bottom of the paper. Scissors and cutting are a little bit different than writing. When we write, we always start at the top of the paper. When we cut, we always start at the bottom of the paper. So you're gonna start with your thumb up and you're gonna cut around your Easter egg. Now this right here is just a decoration. We don't cut that part. So just cut around the outside of your egg. And if you want, you can cut into the little cracks like this, or you can just cut straight down like that. It's okay if you do that. And then you're gonna cut around that. That's your first piece. So once you have it cut out, set it aside so you don't lose it. Then you're gonna cut out the next piece. Remember, start at the bottom. You can just cut right up that crack right there, or you can cut a zigzag into it if you want. And you're gonna cut around the outside. Remember, you don't wanna cut on these lines. That's just for your decoration on your Easter egg. Then you're gonna set that piece aside, and then you're gonna cut out your chick. Now, this is really important because every year I have little preschoolers who cut off the hair accidentally off their baby chick or cut off their wings, so you gotta be Pay really close attention and make sure you cut around the outside of your chick. So remember, cut around the outside of the wing. Come up and around, cut around the chick's hair. Come around the other side, cut out around the wing and around the bottom of your chick. So then you have your little chick. Then you'll set your scissors aside and you should have this piece, this piece, and this piece. Now this next part, you're gonna need mom and dad or big brother or sister's help. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna line up, there's a dot right here, a dot right here, and a dot right here, okay? And you're gonna take the chick first and you're gonna lay one side of the egg on top with the dot on top of the chick's dot, and then you're gonna put the other dot on top of that. So it's gonna look like that. Then you have to hold it, so this is where you're gonna need mom or dad to help you. And you're gonna take a really pointy pencil and you're gonna poke a hole right where that dot is. So see how I poked a hole right there with that pencil? Then you're gonna take your little brad tack and you're gonna poke it through or have mom and dad poke it through. And then you're gonna open it up on the back so it holds all three of those pieces together. Then when you're all done, the little Easter egg cracks open and look what's inside. It's a little baby chick. It's so cute. So that is your project. So let's go over it one more time. So first, you're gonna color. Then you're gonna get your scissors and have mom and dad help you cut out all three pieces. So you're gonna need your baby chick, one side of your egg and the other side of the egg. Then you're gonna Put all the pieces together, line up the little dot, have mom or dad or big brother and sister poke a hole with a pencil, and then put the brad tack in and open it up on the back. And then if you want to, normally at preschool we would write our name on the back because there's so many kids here, but since you're just at home, you don't have to write your name. But if you want to, you can write your name on the back of the chick. 
And then you can go around showing everybody that you hatched a little chick out of your Easter egg, okay? All right, guys, so go ahead and take your papers, your crayon, your brad tack, and your scissors, and go work on this project. And then when you're all done, come back and press play. Okay, how did your chick project turn out? Did you guys get it all done? If you did, I would love for you to send me a picture of it. So ask your mom or dad if they can take a picture with your phone and then send me the picture. And remember, when you're all done, you gotta clean up your mess. So gather up all your garbage, put your pencils or crayons away, and um, put your scissors away. Remember to walk with them like bunny ears. And I'm gonna throw this to my husband, Shane. And he's gonna throw that away for me. Okay, thanks, Shane. All right, next, I want you guys to get out your 10 objects. So you can have blocks, you can have cereal, Legos, uh, little dinosaur toys. If you have little dollies or little animals, you just need 10 of them. So let's count these out. I'm gonna count mine and you count yours. Put them all in a nice line like this. Get them all lined up right in front of you. You can sit at the table or on the floor in front of the TV, wherever you are. Just put these in front of you, line them up, and let's count them one at a time. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh-oh, I only have eight. So I need to go get two more. I'll be right back. Okay, all right, <clears throat> let's count them one more time. Here we go, you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now I have ten objects, and hopefully you do too. Okay, now you're not going to see my face because I want you guys to focus on these little blocks right here. So I'm going to show you something first. And then I want you to do the same thing with your objects at home. So we're gonna pretend and use our imagination today. So since we're talking about animals, we're gonna talk about animals at the zoo. And we're gonna pretend that we're zookeepers. Can you guys pretend, turn on your imagination and pretend that you're zookeepers? And at the zoo, when you have a zoo, you need to have animals, right? So if you're a zookeeper and you open a zoo, you're gonna to need to get some animals. So we're gonna pretend like we're gonna get some penguins first. So move your objects aside, and we're gonna pretend that we went all the way to Antarctica and we got two penguins. So can you show me two objects? Count up, two objects. We're gonna pretend that these are our two penguins. So we started out with two animals in our zoo. Then we need more animals, right? We can't have a zoo with just two penguins. So we're gonna go to Africa and we're gonna find some lions. So we go to Africa and we find three lions. So we're gonna pretend that these three blocks are my three lions at my zoo. So let's count them, one, two, three. Now, we ran out of money so we can't buy any more animals. So we're gonna see how many animals we have at the zoo all together. So first we got two penguins and then we got three more lions, and if we put them all together and count them, let's count how many animals we have at the zoo. One, two, three, four, five. So how many animals do we have in our zoo? We have five, that's right. And remember, this is called adding. Adding means to get more. So you start with something, you get more, and then you count how many you have all together. So if we say this in math language, we would say two plus three more equals five. Can you say that with me? Let's do that again. Two plus three more equals five all together. Okay, now, I'm gonna give you guys a math problem. I'm gonna have Shane move the camera up a little bit <clears throat> so you can see me. And we're gonna pretend that we live on a farm this time. And I want you to use your blocks, your Legos, or whatever you're using. And we're gonna do this math problem together, okay? So we're gonna pretend we're on a farm, or we're starting a farm, and we're farmers. And we need animals on a farm, right? 
So first, I think the most important animal we need are horses. So we're gonna go get some horses. So we're gonna go and get three horses. Can you count out three horses with your objects? Okay, show me your three horses. Okay, let's count them. One, two, three. So we have three horses on our farm. And let's see, what animals should we get next? I think we should have cows, because cows, we can get milk and make butter and cheese and yogurt from cows, so I think cows are pretty important. So let's go buy some cows, and we are gonna buy three cows. We'll put the horses over here, and we're gonna buy three cows. So can you get three cows and put them in your farm? We're gonna just pretend that right on the floor in front of you or on the table in front of you is your farm. So let's count our cows, ready? One, two, three. Good job. So on our farm, we have three horses and we got three more cows. So how many animals do we have on our farm all together? We're gonna put them all together and count how many animals we have on our farm. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. So how many animals do we have on our farm all together? Six, very good. So if we talk in math language, we're gonna say three plus three more equals six all together. So we kind of have a small farm. We only have six animals on our farm. But if we kept going, we could add pigs and chickens and goats and what else, what other, what other animals can you think of to put on your farm? If you want, you can keep going and you can use your blocks or your objects and you can keep adding more animals to your farm or to your zoo and you can see how many animals you can get and then count them all. See if you can count all of your animals. So this is adding. Remember, adding means to get more. We start with some, we get more, and then we count them all together. That is called adding. All right, guys. <clears throat> That's it for video lesson number one. I just want you guys to know, <laughs> dang, <laughs> I really miss you guys. I really, really miss you guys a lot. And I hope that you're doing good. And I'm so excited that we get to do these video lessons. And uh, <laughs> I hope you guys had fun today. Please, please remember that you are good, you are strong, and you are smart. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye, you guys.